The fifth factor that can also affect diffusion rate is the nature of the substances. You see, depending on the type of substances, it can actually affect whether it can pass through the phospholipid bilayer or not. So if you can see here, I'm drawing out the phospholipid bilayer. And in the phospholipid bilayer, I have highlighted the yellow part, which is the nonpolar region, which is made out of the, the phospholipid tails interacting with each other. A very interesting thing that can happen is small nonpolar molecules, for example, oxygen and carbon dioxide, can easily pass through the phospholipid bilayer without any problems whatsoever from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. This process is a passive or rather automatic process. Just as a reminder for you, nonpolar molecules basically means that they do not have any charges, therefore they cannot interact with water. Another example of nonpolar molecules that can easily pass through the phospholipid bilayer are fatty acids, because fatty acids themselves are quite nonpolar as well, which I'm drawn out there. So fatty acids can also move across the phospholipid bilayer from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. You see, a lot of times I'll ask my students, um, does the size determine whether the molecules can actually pass through the bilayer? And most students will say, yeah, if the molecule is too big, it cannot pass through the bilayer. But if the molecule or the particle is very small, it can pass through the bilayer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw out a fatty acid molecule and a sodium ion, which I've drawn out in green over there. If fatty acids can pass through the phospholipid bilayer, what about sodium ion, which is significantly smaller? The weird thing is, even though sodium ions are significantly smaller than fatty acid molecules, sodium ion will not be able to pass through the bilayer. The reason is because the sodium ion is a polar molecule. It has charges, which is a positive charge in this case. And when it has a charge, it cannot interact with the tails. The tails just push it away because the tails are forming a hydrophobic interaction. So thus, the sodium ions cannot squeeze through the gaps of the bilayer and cross to the other side of the cell membrane. You see, small nonpolar molecules can easily pass through because they don't have any charges. And when they don't have any charges at all, they are able to interact with the nonpolar tails in between the bilayer, form a temporary hydrophobic interaction, and just easily move through without any problems whatsoever. So you see, it's not just the size of the particle that matters, it is also the charge or the polarity of the molecule or substance. The polarity of the particle matters too. So nonpolar substances will be able to pass through the bilayer very easily, but polar substances such as ions will not be able to do so. So then after that, we just want to talk about water. Now, in chapter two, I did mention to you that water has polarity. It's a dipole, by the way, but the polarity of water is quite weak. The partially positive charges and partially negative charges. And water is quite small. So can water actually pass through the bilayer? The weird thing is water can actually pass through the bilayer due to its extremely small size and also quite weak polarity. But it is important to note that water has a bit of difficulty passing through the bilayer, which I've represented in this case. So for example, you can see two water molecules crossing through the bilayer, but one of it bounces away. So water has more difficulty passing through the phospholipid bilayer compared to, let's say, oxygen, carbon dioxide, or fatty acids. So it is worth repeating that polar substances have charges, and small polar substances such as ions will not be able to pass through the phospholipid bilayer at all, and because they are unable to interact with the fatty acid tails. Larger polar substances such as glucose or amino acids will also not be able to pass through the phospholipid bilayer. And for the same particular reason, because they cannot interact with the fatty acid tails. 
So in summary, if I were to just draw out the phospholipid bilayer, as you can see here, Small nonpolar molecules such as oxygen and carbon dioxide have no difficulty passing through the bilayer. Larger nonpolar substances such as fatty acids and steroids, examples of steroids will be hormones such as testosterone. You don't need to memorize that, but it's good to know that there are very large steroid hormones, which are lipid-based hormones, that do not have difficulty passing through the bilayer at all. The reason is because they are nonpolar. Um, slightly polar substances such as water will be able to pass through the bilayer, but it passes through at a lesser rate compared to nonpolar particles. And the reason why water can pass through the bilayer is because it has a very weak polarity and it has a small size. So it kind of is able to pass through the bilayer. But polar substances such as ions and also glucose and amino acids will not be able to pass through the bilayer at all. So the phospholipids, the function of phospholipids is to form a phospholipid bilayer to prevent polar substances from passing through the membrane easily. Then after that, you might want to ask the question, well, if glucose cannot pass through the bilayer, how does glucose enter the cell? Because the cell uh, the cell needs glucose, right? So how does that happen? We will look at that in the next video.